Here I have my acrylic paints and I'm going to show you how you can uh, create different effects on paper with acrylic. You can also use acrylic on canvas, but here I'm going to show you um, how you can paint on watercolor paper. So what happens when you paint with acrylic and water, it dilutes acrylic and makes it look like watercolors. So if you are looking for a watercolor effect, basically you just have to take the acrylic paint and dilute it with water and you don't want to use a large amount of paint. So this is one example of just making, creating different washes. Composto is a technique where you use a lot of um, expressive marks and you layer the paint on rather than mix it with water. You can still uh, dip your brush every once into water but mainly it's about expressive marks. Also you could try and apply your paint with a knife. So this is more of an impasto look. And what's fun is that you can really move around and scratch the surface with your painting knife. Um, now I would like to show you two watercolor techniques. One is called wet on wet and the other one is called wet on dry. For wet on wet you're basically adding colors to one another while they're wet. For the wet on dry you're applying a layer, allowing it to dry and then going over it and adding another layer. So when you create the wet on wet effect it makes your work look very spontaneous and it allows for a lot of accidents and bleeding and the wet on dry allows you to layer and make it look more realistic and refined. So I'm just going to show you both techniques. Anytime when you're working with a watercolor paper and watercolor you can map out a large area with a wet brush and that allows the paint to flow freely and it also allows you to create a nice even surface. So this will be my wet on dry, so I'm going to let this section dry and I'm going to work with this section. I can start going in with other colors and these colors will be bleeding in together. And you can see they create these um, kind of hairy edges that can be really beautiful and you can go in with more intense colors and also depending on how this is drying, you know, if it's still really wet, it might not bleed as much as areas that are already drying but are still damp. So this allows you for a lot more uh, spontaneity. While my area is drying in here, I'm going to show you also how you can create washes with color ink. And um, you will see how similar ink is to watercolor, but it's a lot more intense and it can give you a better bleeding effect. There are two types of ink that uh, you can buy. There's water-based ink and there's acrylic-based ink. And um, they look pretty similar, but acrylic-based ink, uh, which is what I have right here, uh, is a lot thicker and more intense. So you're um, able to get much brighter colors. You can get really, really light you know, and transparent, just as with watercolor. Or you can go in um, which m with much more intense, darker colors. You can also create very flat shapes. Uh, when I say flat, I mean there won't be variation in their hues. There will be one color. It won't vary from dark to light. Here I have my quill and I just want to show you how um, you can incorporate line drawing into your color ink washes. You will see areas that are still wet um, when I go over them it creates a nice bleeding puddling effect. So you can really take advantage of that. I can um, purposefully go into these areas in order to have this more creative outline and also add some dark shapes into it. A uh, big part of working with ink is kind of reacting to the medium and being spontaneous with it. 
don't be afraid to create accidents. You know, accidents, whoops, like this one. Um, accidents are not always a bad thing, so you can uh, use them to your advantage and incorporate them into your drawing. So if this was an accident, you know, and I didn't want this there, I could somehow integrate it into the piece and make it an intentional part of the artwork. Now I think you can see that my dry layer of watercolor has dried, so I'm going to go in with another layer. Uh, the trick is to put it over the areas that are already dry. So what happens is that you create this edge, um, and that edge is something that you can blend in or leave as a hard line. And then the next step would be to allow this to dry and then go with another color and allow it to dry and go over with another color. And basically artists can have hundreds of layers in their watercolor drawings and that's what makes their drawing really um, vibrant and have a lot of depth. And these areas don't necessarily have to be big. They can be on much smaller scales, such as individual shapes or stones that uh, you're layering over and over again. The idea is to build up your colors and not to get too dark right away. So if you start out with uh, lighter undertones, such as yellow, you can keep adding other colors, such as um, red or blue or brown, and uh, gradually build them up to the image that you like.